Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Today we're going behind the scenes in my studio and we're going to be looking at how I lit this image. Now this is going to be a long video. It's about um, 15 minutes all in in three sections. So we're going to spend about five minutes in the studio looking at how the lights were set up. I'll show you the exposure from each individual light so you can see exactly what each light was doing. We'll jump into Photoshop and do a speed edit. So we'll play through the edit, capture the edit in real time. I'll play it back to you at 1,500% of the original speed so you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. It was a long job. And then finally, I'll load in the um, the layer stack and we'll be able to just have a quick tour of the layer stack. So if you just want to see how the final image was put together, you can check out the lighting at the beginning of the video and I'll put a timestamp in the comments. You can just jump straight to the end and check out the layer stack. If you want to see how it was done, you can watch the, uh, the full video, but you're probably going to need a coffee, a cup of tea, a cold beer, whatever it takes, guys. So that's enough time from me. Don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's get straight over to the studio and see how we set up the lighting. Hey guys, today I'm in the studio shooting bottles, specifically this bottle of Dalmore. This is my first product for the day. I'm gonna try and get three, um, three product shots done today and I'll make videos for each of them so you can see my three different lighting setups. I'm hoping they're gonna be very different. So this is the um, first shot of the day and it's just gonna be a classic bottle shot. So what I'm trying to achieve is a very smooth gradation of light around the side of the bottle. Now that is problematic for a couple of reasons. Number one, if I put a softbox there, no matter how big the softbox I'm just gonna see a reflection of the softbox in the side of the glass and secondly as the glass curves the portion of the uh, bottle that's pointing at the ceiling will reflect the ceiling so I'll need to have a light source that's very very high relative to the subject so what I've done is bought a 17 pound roll of tracing paper super cheap and it's one meter wide so this particular um, setup is one meter wide dropping two meters and I've got two pieces of paper next to each other and I just sellotape them together to make one huge diffuser basically. So if we look down the side you'll see I've got uh, a Godox SK302, whatever. Could be anything, could be a speed light, could be any strobe that you've got just knocking around. Um, I've put it in a strip box and it's firing directly into the side of this paper. Now if I don't fire any lights incidentally, if you're new to product photography, um, if I don't fire any lights you'll see from my camera screen I've just got a black image so any of the light that's happening inside this room is negated by my camera settings, it's just black. But if I bring in the uh, main light, this is what we get. So you can see I've got a really nice gradation of light around the side of the bottle and that's formed by the strip light hitting the uh, the diffuser right next to the bottle and by the time it reaches the end of the paper it's faded away to essentially black so there's no edge visible in the reflection and we get this nice gradation that describes the bottle shape. Now we've also got a nice glow to the liquid and that's achieved by having um, just some reflective card, just silver card, 50p, bought from the post office and I've cut it to shape so you can't see it through the lens and it's just reflecting the light back through the liquid to make it glow. So that's my first light. I'm going to turn that off and we'll have a very quick look at the background lights. Now the background light is super important because it is um, really sort of drawing your attention into the product. Now in this case it's just another SK300, super cheap strobe, could be a speed light, could be any lights that you're um, used to using. You could do this with hot lights, um, LED lights, you just need a really solid tripod and a longer exposure. So any lights you've got knocking around will do the job. What I'm doing is putting it into a reflector with a grid which keeps it into a nice tight focus behind the product and then a diffuser over that grid just to soften the edge as it gradates out into darkness. So that light fired on its own looks like this. And you can see some of the light is coming through the neck of the bottle and just highlighting the liquid there. And if I bring in my main light, um, you'll see this is essentially our main um, lighting setup. Now, this is giving me everything that I need apart from, it's way too dark, isn't it? If we look at the front of the bottle, it's too dark. I'm not getting any of the chrome and I'm not really getting any lights on the box either. 
So I did try a couple of different things actually today. I've been experimenting and I tried this giant Boeing softbox that we've got knocking around and it was cool, but um, even at this size, if you put a softbox directly onto your product, you're going to see the softbox in the product. So I was trying to use it as a fill. You can use a big softbox to draw a, a highlight down the side of your bottle, but as a fill light, it's just no good. So what I've done is put a snoot pointing directly into the front of the bottle. The purpose of this light is just to pick out the uh, chrome work and some of it is gonna spill across the front of the box. So if I bring that light in now, we'll see our final image looks like this. So I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. This is the straight out of camera image. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how we go about retouching it. Okay, so we're in Photoshop and I'll talk you through the speed edit. We'll have a quick look through the layer stack that's generated this at the end of the process, generated by this, sorry, at the end of the process. But to start with, we'll just go through and look at some of the issues that we dealt with in this uh, retouch. So the first thing is that the snoot is casting a shadow of the stag's head on the label at the rear. It's a really easy fix because I've got a uh, an individual file with each exposure for each separate light firing. So I was able to use the um, the shot that you saw in the behind the scenes of just the um, the gradated light on the side without the snoot and just replace the label from that. A little bit of dodging and burning just to darken it down and we're good to go. So now what we've done is put a separate layer, a duplicate layer, and set it to screen mode so it's lightening the image. I've done that so that I can paste, uh, sorry, paint directly onto the mask in order to remove the stag's head. It's easier to see what I'm doing that way if I'm painting an organic mask. I'm not using the pen tool. I'm just gonna paint it by hand with my Wacom tablet. And once I've got it all tidied up, I can invert it and I've got the stag's head in place organically painted on and set to screen mode as just a duplicate of the layer underneath and it brightens up the stag's head quite nicely. Um, <clears throat> then we've gone on to the, um, the label and treated it in the same sort of way, just masking it out. But this is adding on the, the layer from the snoot and the same again with the stag's head here. We're going to add in the layer, um, add in a layer of the exposure from the snoot firing directly at the front of the bottle mask out some of the highlights that were a little bit too hot and then go ahead to make another duplicate of the snoot layer before painting in the detail that we want on the neck of the bottle and the front of the box. So you can see when I'm turning the layer on and off, the snoot caused a lot of specular highlights on the bottle and a lot of other problems. So by doing this uh, method, just painting in the snoot layer above the label, the stag's head and the neck of the bottle in the box is able to just bypass all of that stuff as opposed to masking out problems, just masked in the bits that we wanted. So here I'm spending a little bit of time drawing a mask and it's always worth doing this. I, I used to be terrified of the pen tool. I could never get it to do what I wanted. It just seems so easy to me now. And you'll notice if you look at my pen work, I don't put very many points in. I'm, I'm pretty choosy and my pen workflow is really, really easy, really, really quick. And um, I will put up a tutorial about that in the future at some point. It's, it's, um, it's one of my favorite tools now. It used to be my least favorite tool, terrified to use it. And now I just can't get enough pen. Can't get enough pen, guys. So standard frequency separation workflow, just cleaning up the bottle, any specular highlights on inconsistencies in the glass. If you look really closely at any glass bottle, you're gonna find all sorts of inconsistencies in it. It looks from a distance like it's a smooth gradated surface, but it's just not the case. And there's also speckles of dust and other, other work to be done on the high frequency there. So this pass of frequency separation was really just a clean up took the opportunity as well to clean up the uh, label at the top. So working on the detail at the moment, if you're not 100% up to speed with frequency separation in product photography, I've basically used the detail layer, the high frequency, to get rid of any detail texture using the clone stamp. And now I'm working to just blur and blend the low frequency um, information just to uh, work on the tonal layer and remove the twists and the seam on the um, wrapper on the label. Now at this point, I found a few inconsistencies in the print work on the box. So I'm just using classic dodge and burn. I've got a black and white layer so I can see the luminosity because that's all I'm changing, luminosity values. And I'm painting very, very low flow uh, with black and white on a mid gray layer set to soft light uh, in order to balance out the tonality on the front of the box. 
Now that's all done, we're onto the stag's head. I've added a curves layer and I'm just using it as a dodge and burn before going ahead and sticking in some more um, highlights and a little bit more dodge and burn just to really bring out the detail in that stag's head. Now, final frequency separation pass. This is just for cleanup and blending some of the tonality in the bottle. Also, you'll notice there's some uh, what looks like damage to the corner of the um, to the corner of the uh, box. There it is. And so I'm using the low frequency there to fill in the color there, and the high frequency there to get rid of the texture in that damage. Really, really easy repair if you've got the right tools to hand. So. I did also put a, um, uh, what's it called, dust and scratches filter just to um, just to brush over the whole of the tabletop. Um, it seemed quicker than going over it with the frequency separation tools. But then after that was done, I can see using my solar layer, there's still a little bit of work to be done. So while I've got my frequency separation layer intact, I can work over the low frequency and just balance out any of the imperfections that are caused by specks of dust and inconsistencies in my Perspex worktop just to make sure it's all super clean. So these crazy colors that you can see are part of my um, visualization process. It's a check layer just to make sure that I'm not missing anything that would be subtle uh, in the reflection of the bottle. It really kind of brings everything out. It's anything but subtle, isn't it? So that's a solar check layer. Um, I'll refer to it in a future tutorial, I'm sure. So you'll see how that's done if you don't um, if you don't know what that's all about. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a visualization check, and it just helps to finish off all of your um, frequency separation work, just to make sure you haven't missed any small details anywhere. So, final bit of dodge and burn, just um, running a bit of a dodge over the um, silver work on the front of the box. And I think one last pass on the stag's head just to bring out any final highlights there. And we're basically finished with this image. Last little bit of contrast with some contrast curves and levels just to check that we're using the full dynamic range in the image. Balance those out, add in a little bit of classic high pass sharpening and we are basically done with this. Now at this point I kind of thought that the, the reflection the table could do with muting. So I use the same mask again it's always worth drawing a good mask at the start of your project if you think you're going to end up using it more than once. And I was able to use the same mask again to set up a gradient layer and then just mask it out away from the bottle and just really dial down the brightness of the reflection in the table. And I believe that's the end of our edit, guys. At this point, I'm going to jump in. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I just added a little bit of additional um, pop a little bit of saturation to the um, color of the whiskey. Why not make it look a little bit extra rich? Crop the image out, and at this point, we'll jump into Photoshop, and I'll stop this speed edit nonsense. We'll have a quick look at the layers and call it a day. Right, so we are in Photoshop, and I'm gonna give you a tour of the layers. I know you've just seen the speed edit, so um, this is just gonna be a quick tour so you can see how it all came together. And personally, I am surprised at how much work this one took. I thought it was gonna be a five minute edit in Photoshop, but I ended up doing quite a lot to it. So here's our original background layer. This layer is made up of the gradated light from the site, uh, from the side, sorry, but with the label replaced with my final exposure with all lights firing apart from the snoot. So it's just a little bit lighter. And then obviously I've done this little bit of dodge and burning just to just to take my eye away from it. I don't want it to be too light. I felt like it was a bit of a distraction. And then this is the stag from my original um, gradient layer as well. So all of these three layers are from my gradient layer. And what I've done is um, here's my original let me turn these off. Here's my original gradient layer masked out. You saw me draw that mask with a pen tool. Um, so only the lighter pixels inside this mask are being applied to the image. Then I've got the label from the rear and because it's on screen mode, it's a little bit brighter. I've done that because the uh, stag was casting a shadow and I didn't like it. I've done a bit of dodge and burn, which is clipped to that layer so it doesn't affect anything else just to darken it down so it's not a distraction. And here's the stag. It's a duplicate of the same layer but set to screen. So it's just giving me a little bit of additional pop on the stag and helping to bring that out. Next, this is my snoot layer. 
And what I've got is three copies of the same exposure. You can kind of see from looking at the thumbnail, it's the same thing three times, but I've masked in the label from this one, the stag highlights from this one, and just the front of the bottle and the neck of the bottle. So I'm sure you would have seen that coming together in the speed edit. Now this is my initial frequency separation and you can see exactly what's happened here. We've cleaned up the uh, damage on the corners of the box and we've cleaned up this, um, this refraction of light coming through the liquid and um, landing, oh, sorry, on the front of this box. And there's also a few other bits of clean up here and there, but it's just, um, you know, the, 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 um, the normal kind of frequency separation stuff you do, all of these little specks of dust, the kind of stuff that if you're a pixel peeper, it's the end of the world, but most people will probably never notice. So classic frequency separation stuff, hit me up in the comments if you want any more information about that, but it's just standard frequency separation and I will be publishing some tutorials on that later on. Uh, now this is a bit of extra dodge and burn and you can see this is where we had some inconsistencies on the front of the box. So let's open that up. It's just a dodge and burn gray layer and this is my visual aid. It's just um, a black and white layer. This layer is actually um, a mid gray layer set to saturation mode. It's a much more reliable way of getting your black and white um, accurate. If it's just flat and you're just looking at the luminosity now, then we've got a contrast curve added to that so that I can see exactly what's going on. And then you can see where I've just dodge and burn by hand just to bring down uh, that inconsistency in the print work on the front of the box. Um, it's pretty subtle, but it was driving me crazy. So there it is fixed. Finally, we've got this stag highlight. This again is dodge and burn. Uh, I've got two different dodge and burns on here. The first one was going to be a um, mid gray layer with a little bit of work done to it. And the second one is done via curves. So this curve is just pushing up the, uh, the mid tones a little bit. And then I'm masking through where I want it just to give me a little bit more pop to my stag. Okay. So that's that. This is dust on the table and it's literally just, um, oh, didn't mean to do that. Sorry guys. It's literally just the dust and scratches filter masked out. You can see I'm hiding the bottle, but I'm allowing it to come onto the tabletop and it's just getting rid of dust and scratches nice and quickly for me. And then I've got a stamp visible there with a bit of extra work done to it to help clean up any more specks of dust. Some final frequency separation, which is just for cleanup. I think you can see if I come right in here that we've got, you know, some reflections on the bottle and uh, a little bit of cleanup on this bottom corner. So little details. Again, here's my frequency separation workflow. Um, this is the low frequencies and you can see where I've blurred them and blended them together because I'm only working with color and tonality there. And here is the high frequency there added on top where we've done some work with the um, clone stamp to get rid of any texture problems that we might have. A final bit of dodge and burn onto the stag's head and the text on the front of the box. And then we're done guys. Contrast curve, output levels to make sure we're using the full dynamic range. At this point, I've added classic sharpening, decided to tone down the uh, reflection in the table by using a gradient layer and um, just masking it using the same mask I've been using all the way through this process. Little luminosity boost because I felt like the whole thing was getting too dark and finished with hue and saturation. If we jump to the red layer, you'll see we've just added some saturation and um, raise the lightness of the red pixels, but very specifically the red pixels that are featured in the tonality of the whiskey. So we've taken a, um, a reading of that red color and then applied these adjustments just to that particular red color. And you can see which shades are being affected here. So if you've got any questions about this, this hue and saturation adjustment or any of the dodging and burning frequency separation, advanced pen tool stuff and why it's easy now. Um, the pen tool used to fill me with dread. I used to absolutely hate it. And now I look forward to it because I know I'm going to get a really good result in about two minutes and I'll feel really smug and pleased with myself every time I break out the pen tool. So if you're like me and you absolutely hate the pen tool and it fills you with dread, 
Um, I want you to know that's where I was only, you know, a couple of years ago. I absolutely could not face it. But um, I will be putting some pen tool stuff up. I'll be putting up some more stuff on frequency separation and masking. So if you want to know more, either subscribe to the channel or just drop me a DM, guys. I'm here to help you out. I understand what it's like to struggle with the pen tool or to not quite understand frequency separation. So if you've got any questions, just ask, just ask. Drop me a DM, hit me up in the comments. And um, if I don't hear from you directly, I'll see you in the next video, guys.